let's go ahead and move on to Ukraine. Let's go ahead and put this up there on the screen. This is developments on the Crimean nuke on the Crimean bridge blast. Why does that matter? Well, the circumstances of this one, if they play out and can officially be blamed on Ukraine and the intelligence services, which is currently the leading theory, could of course lead to escalation. And we are paying attention to the circumstances very closely. So the Russians are claiming, the FSB says, that five Russians and three Ukrainian and Armenian citizens have been arrested. They claim the explosive device that blew up the bridge was concealed in 22 pallets of plastic film roll weighing a total of 22,700 kilos. The FSB, and again, this is from the FSB, I'm not saying this is true, says that the explosives were sent in early August by ship from the port of Odessa in Ukraine to the port of Rus in Bulgaria. They then passed through the port of Poti in Georgia and were then shipped to Armenia before arriving by road in Russia. So why did the circumstances of that matter? Well, you may recall that we brokered that deal in the Black Sea in order to let the port of Odessa open so that Ukraine could ship out grain from there to avert a global food crisis. The circumstances of this, of which people are not paying close attention to, is if Ukraine did use the, basically the opening of that port to facilitate the transfer of explosives on their eventual way to Russia, yeah. to then drive it from the Russian side to Crimea and then blow up the truck, then that imperils the grain deal, which imperils the entire global food supply because Ukraine used to export, I think, like one third or something of the developing world's oh, it's grain. It's known as the breadbasket bread basket. of Europe and yep. a breadbasket of the former Soviet Union. Now, it's also, it's worth reading the full explanation. Let's go ahead and put this on the screen. Again, this is from the FSB. This is a direct translation, please. So they say the explosive device, as I said, Cargo was transported to Rusa. When the shipment arrived, it was cleared by rules and the documents were switched out. Afterwards, the shipper was assigned to an Armenian LLC. The explosives were transported to Georgia. October 7th, the device was loaded into an individual's car. He drove them to a certain place where they were blown up on the Crimean Bridge. They say, quote, the entire operation was controlled by an officer of the Ukrainian Ministry of Internal Affairs who introduced himself as Ivan Ivanovich, which, I don't know, that seems like a... A little bit too obvious. Up, right? Anyway, uh, <laughs> he used a SIM card he had bought on the internet registered to Sergei er Erdanchenko, a resident of Ukraine, in order to coordinate this. Again, I have no idea if this is any of this is true. Could be complete and total BS, but yeah. that is the official narrative from the FSB. In a way, whether it's true or not, how they respond to it is what matters the most. It's true. Ukraine, what they think is true is, matters a lot. Well, what they say is true mm -hmm. uh, is what matters. The Ukrainians say this is a fiction, that none of this has happened. They're... It's very strange the way the Ukrainians are handling this. On the one hand, they're taking selfies with pictures of the bridge and celebrating the attack. On the other, they're like, ah, oh, we didn't have anything to do with it, but maybe we did, wink, wink. Yeah. And so, I mean, I think it's they probably pretty obvious to deduce that it happened. I continue to think, Crystal, that that story which came out uh, from the New York Times, which said that the Ukrainians were behind the assassination of Daria Dugina in Moscow, was a basically pl a plea to the military services, like, please don't blow up this bridge. They're like, mm -hmm. don't do it. Please don't do it because we know That's that you're planning point. something. That is and, you know, point. why else would they leak it months later? I really believe. And, of course, also, it's not like you've seen the same celebration from U.S. officials around this bridge. No. And also, one of the red lines from the Biden administration is we're not giving Ukraine weapons that they can use to strike Crimea. And so the Russians have come out and said, you know, nuclear weapons would not be an appropriate response right. to this. We didn't know that in advance. Yeah. Not at yeah, all. Right. I mean, this was a dramatic provocation. Yeah. And I think, you know, first of all, uh, it is worth noting that, you know, the FSB explanation of what happened with that car bomb. Right. Which we really pretty much dismissed at the time. Yeah. We're like, ah, this is what they, w it turned out to be true. Right. So <laughs> do keep that in mind when they're laying out very specifically, you know, their official narrative of who was responsible and how this all happened. But, you know, the other reason why the Ukrainians, while they want to sort of celebrate it, may not want to take direct credit is if this is the chain of events that actually occurred, which is one of the leading theories, you know, in terms of like it was a truck bomb uh, driven across this bridge, detonated specifically at the time to coincide with when the train is going across on the mm -hmm. other side. That's a suicide attack. Yeah. I mean, so that's it, it, it's sort of astonishing to me that. No one has noted that if this is, in fact, the, the method that they used, you're talking about the Ukrainian intelligence services using suicide bombers. 
Well, um, I don't know if that's been confirmed, right? No, Other it's not confirmed, but right. I'm saying if right. this is the, if this is what happened, and this is also, again, one of the leading explanations that's been offered in mainstream mm-hmm. in the mainstream press, you're talking about a, a suicide attack. So that may be another reason why they don't really acknowledge that they won't that they're potentially using these sorts of tactics. That would be crazy. If right? True. Yeah. I mean, I was I mean, telling you. And it's yesterday. crazy to me that no yeah. one has even mentioned that. Yeah, I mean, if it's true. I mean, I, I said to you, I mean, non-Islamic use of suicide bombing is just incredibly rare. Like it, the Tamil Tigers, are, I think, are one of the only groups that have ever done it. I'm trying, you know, I'm racking my, I took a course on this actually in college, the evolution of suicide bomb. And as far as I know, this would, <laughs> this would definitely enter the textbooks as, uh, I mean, as one of those, yeah, I mean, well, as the use of a tactic. That's and that why would show you just how extraordinary it is if it were employed right. in warfare here. And that's yeah. why the Russians are calling it a terrorist attack. Mm-hmm. I which, mean, which makes sense. I mean, you know, you shouldn't forget this. Russia actually has its own suicide bombing problems with a lot of the Dagestani population. Yeah, and more, right. the people in Moscow have suffered before. Uh, the people in the provinces and more have used. So, so yeah, listen, wow. I'm not, I just want to be clear. This right. isn't confirmed. I'm not saying that is what happened, but it is one of the leading theories that's been laid out in the press without them ever going that next step and saying, like, and that would mean it was a suicide attack. You have the Ukrainians who don't, who want to celebrate, but don't really want to take credit. And then the FSB laying out what their official narrative is of what happened. And, you know, I think your point is the most important one, Sagar, which is that in some ways it matters less what actually happened versus what the Russian government is selling to their people right. as the narrative of what happened yeah, to and you. So, look, will it be a justification for more than the strikes we've seen on Kiev or not? We're going to see in the coming days and we'll keep everybody apprised. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.